Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here, New Life Pentecostal Church, Albany, Georgia. I hope you're having a great day in Jesus. This is among commercial printing that's readable, very possibly in English, the smallest Bible that has ever been printed. And now the fascinating thing about that is Nelson actually has a Bible that is called the smallest Bible or did for quite some time. It was called the smallest Bible. But when you would compare it, it was not the smallest Bible. It, this was the smallest Bible. And so I remember when I sold Bibles full time, you know, several people would come in and they would want the whole Bible. Um, probably the best Bibles for New Testament Psalms and Proverbs in readable print is, I think, still printed by National Publishing. National Publishing publishes, I think it's the National Baptist Convention, National Publishing has uh, Psalms and Proverbs, which a lot of people like, and the print is somehow really large for a small New Testament. But for a complete Bible, this was the smallest. So I can remember trying to sell these things. And so you have Nelson out. And, and I don't know that I should even go into a lot of this, but this this is not the smallest Bible. But now I just got this off eBay a while back because Thrift Books said it was the Nelson smallest Bible. So I wanted to do a comparison. But this is not the Nelson smallest Bible. The Nelson smallest Bible comes in a red and white box with actually, excuse me, a uh, magnifying glass in there, a flat magnifying glass in there. But when you would compare this and the Nelson Smallest Bible, this was the smallest Bible. But the Nelson Bible said the world's smallest Bible on there. And so maybe it's a fascinating study. Maybe it was just me and human nature. Because this happened many, many times that I would put, okay, the people would say, I want the smallest Bible. And so what I would do is I'd put the Nelson out there and say, this one says world's smallest Bible. This one by world publishing is actually the smallest Bible. So they'd say, well, how can they advertise that as the smallest Bible? Well, I don't know. I think maybe that actually they went out of print because we kept harping to Nelson that is not the world's smallest Bible. And it was funny to me to hear Nelson back in those days, the 90s, uh, trying to contort themselves to say, well, this really is the smallest Bible when it's not the smallest Bible. So finally, I got like a Nelson rep to admit to me. He's like, okay, look, I know it's not the smallest Bible. <laughs> but we would go to the CBA conventions and stuff, and we'd like bring this up periodically. Like, you're selling this as the smallest Bible, and it's not the smallest Bible. Okay, so going back to when I'd be trying to sell this, Probably 50%, I was thinking about this the other day, or more, probably over 50% of the people would end up buying the Nelson because it said it was the smallest Bible, even though they could objectively see with their eyes that the World Bible was actually smaller. So they would see the World Bible is smaller, and then they would buy the Nelson because it said it was. You know, and I got to thinking of all kind of stuff, you know, TV says it, the internet says it, Wikipedia says it. Well, it must be true, even though I might see something different with my eyes. You know what I'm saying? So this is commercially the smallest Bible. Now, it doesn't always come with a snap flap. And occasionally it would come military it would come with a metal plate in the front that has evidently saved many military people's lives over the years. And you can still get this. Now, the Nelson Smallest Bible is going for a premium. It has become a collector's item once they put it out of print. And uh, this one, 
not so much. You can get this reasonably priced, even though it is really the smallest Bible. Now, World was bought out by Riverside back, I think, in the 70s, Skip Knapp. Riverside became a competitor with Spring Arbor as far as Christian distribution in the 80s and the 90s, early 2000s, were really the prime time for Christian bookstores in America. They were everywhere. They were ubiquitous. You had Christian Armory, you had Lifeway, you had Holman, you had Independence everywhere. You, and uh, they just, I think the internet just killed. And uh, CBD helped kill a little bit the Christian book distributors because you can buy stuff so cheap. You have phenomenal still bookstores like Baker that we go to every year up in Grand Rapids. Sue up there, just phenomenal. And they have done so much to remain viable, like same day delivery. They have a delivery service now. Um, but it's gotta be obviously within the Western Michigan area. So, and price matching, they'll price match Amazon. I'm not sure if they price match CBD or not. And so they've done a lot uh, in that. But this actually has raised spine edges on there, and it's just pretty much a fantastic Bible, and it's readable. You know, I thank the Lord I don't have to have glasses. I was prescribed glasses probably 15 years ago, and, you know, my country wisdom I've got, I'm like, well, you know, I think wearing glasses will make your eyesight worse. Now, with your glasses on, it'll make it better. But it'll make, so I was like, I'd just rather keep my eyes. But you can actually read this. Now, this is Collins. Now, Collins was a big Bible publisher in, you know, the first 70 years of the 20th century. And going all the way back, I think, to the 1790s, the Collins Bible in the United States, which was considered this incredibly... Uh, perfect Bible that they didn't have all this stuff on, you know, uh, you know, broken letters and all this. So this was published, this is printed and bound in Belgium. I was looking for a date. I don't see a date in here, but let's just say it was done from the eighties through the, uh, early two thousands. I'm just guessing on that. Oh, and I want to get you the code number on there as well. So I can actually read this. Believe it or not, it was actually, without the magnifying glass, a little more readable than the Nelson, if my memory serves me correctly. But like, you know, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now, I've memorized that, so I want to make sure I'm just not going by memory here. That came to pass in the third year of Hosea, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah began to reign. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Abby, the daughter of Zechariah. This is 2 Kings 18, 1 and 2. Now I'm 54 <laughs> with a prescription for glasses, and I'm reading this without glasses. Um, but I kind of hate to show you what it compares to with my Nelson large print, which is my preaching Bible. You'll be able to see a vast difference here. But you know, there's just a lot of people that wanted the Bible, you know, and I'm just really, um, I'm, it scares me when people bring their Bible to church on their phone and that's all they, they do because, you know, what if the cell towers go down? What if the electricity goes down or something? I'm not against it. But I'm just like, I'm always thinking ahead, you know. I'm like, oh, just give me a hard copy here. People died for the hard copy. There's a hard copy in heaven, you know what I'm saying? Let's see if it's red letter. It's not, and it's probably good that it's not red letter. It's probably good that it's not red letter. So let's see, it's the 889F. And this actually had the snap flap bindings. This is imitation leather. Now I'm gonna tell you in this small of a Bible, the imitation leather probably doesn't matter at 
all, not in the least. So let's measure this thing. This thing is 5.8 inches by three and a half. That's with the flap. Now you can get these without the flap as well. And it's still, uh, it's about three and a quarter inches. And the thickness is where it's gonna shine because it's less than an inch thick. So, you know, you can just grab this thing in your paws, you know, uh, trying to think. I had an uncle that worked at Valley Steakhouse up by Berean. He was the cook there and Andre the Giant came in. And uh, Andre the Giant was weirdly enough this, I guess his uh, particular disease he had that made him so big also kept him in a lot of pain so he drank a lot. They said that Andre the Giant could drink like 119 beers at one sitting. So my Uncle Eddie said that Andre the Giant could actually take a beer can and hold it in his hand. You didn't know he had a beer can in his hand. I can't do that even with this Bible. So let's see how big this thing is. I don't drink beer. Thank the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Because um, I'm thinking it's six point print. No, it's not even six point print. And as a matter of fact, my print sizer only goes to six point. That's as small as it goes. So it may be like four and a half or five point print. I'll let you see the end of the box here just in case you ever want to get this. Now it came in genuine leather. It came in bonded leather. And back in those days, the imitation leathers were terrible pretty much everywhere. There's a few exceptions to that. But again, in a Bible this small, it doesn't matter. It, because the spine's not breaking, on and on and so forth. A lot of reasons why it doesn't matter. But it's not going to affect the longevity of your Bible at all. And the leather may even get scuffed up more. You know, but you can just put this in a pocket. Uh, and I just threw my back out. So let's see if I can do this. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Be praying for my back. I need the healing if I'm not healed by him. But like I got all kinds of stuff in my pocket already. Like that. But I mean, you can put it in your pocket and it looks like a wallet or a cell phone or something like that. And uh, you can always as well put it in, keep it in the box in your pocket. So obviously among uh, Christians, we have what's called the pocket knife. This would be called the pocket knife because the Bible's the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So a lot of people want a pocket knife, you know. So, uh, amen. This would be good for everybody to have. Maybe somebody should reprint this if they haven't already because the world went out of business with Riverside. So God bless. Talk with you later in Jesus' name.